I think it's never been more important for people who express their faith in different ways to understand each other. To have faith, whether it's religious or non-religious, is to be spiritual and to talk in a common ground is critical. There is something extraordinary, something wonderful about every human face that you encounter. And faith tells you to celebrate that, it also tells you to serve that. We're in St James's Church Piccadilly, right in the centre of London, and it's a fantastic evening for us because we're welcoming an audience of predominantly young people. Today's event is about building real connections between especially young people of different faith backgrounds and, and other backgrounds. I think learning how to grow our connectedness and make the most of it is one of the most important things we can do at the moment. A city is always a place of diversity. The city is a community that's not defined by kinship, by family, by neighbourhood, in the simple way that a village might be. And that's why cities need a lot of imagination to make them work. Because in a city, it's quite easy to reduce your relationships with some other people just to economics. And in a city, it can be fatally easy for people to slip off the radar, for people to disappear, to be forgotten, not to be noticed. Every faith community looks towards a God whose concern is that everybody should be living to their full capacity. So why is it so difficult to create a human society that does the same thing? Faith communities need to be in there trying to show that that's the connection they want to make. So if cities are going to work at all, we need the intelligence to notice who's being forgotten, to notice the needs that are not being attended to. We need the intelligence to see that the interest of the whole community is bigger than that of any group, and certainly bigger than any group composed of people who are just like us. Social justice and ethics and values and the integrity of the individual and their dignity and respect for each other are fundamental to any faith. What we have to offer to the society around is an enormously positive, constructive vision. If we can't offer that, we can't be surprised if people regard religion as a, as a problem. Spiritual life is a life in relationship, in just and loving relationship. We live at the moment in a society where there's a huge amount of mistrust. Because a lot of people near the bottom of society don't believe that those on top of society have their interests at heart. And they're not entirely wrong about that. We live in a culture where it's very easy for people to think it's a zero-sum game. One person's success is another person's failure. And so we are a very mistrustful society. It's so easy to think sharing makes us weaker. Faith tells us sharing makes us stronger. If any one part of the body, the community, suffers, everybody suffers. If one part is fulfilled, that has implications for everyone. We don't become fully human without each other. For a city to work, we need commitment and imagination, a vision of human dignity. We can't take it for granted. I believe that the resource and the potential for all that is enormous and that for especially younger people of faith in our society, that kind of vision is a compelling and a vivid one. That kind of imperative to change is something that young people very much bring to uh, any discussion. So I think it's really important for young people to get involved in interfaith work. There is a huge appetite for it. Out there, there are people of other communities and other backgrounds who, like you, want to know each other better, who want to find ways of convergence, synergy between different groups, who want to put themselves at the service of the society they're in, in company with others. From, from this talk, how would you say this should affect our everyday living? Asking yourself, where and how can I cross a few frontiers to somebody different? 
Where can I allow my world to be opened up a bit? I thought tonight was a really special event. As people of faith, we have a responsibility to cast our gaze and our, and our action and the, the measure of our work on those who are the most marginalized, to re-engage with those who are hidden, who are, who are needy. I just wanted to ask if you thought that if living in such a diverse society promotes spirituality and harmony between people from different backgrounds. You have the opportunity of growing spiritually in a very rare way. It seems to me that the more diverse communities and people you encounter, the more you can say, God gives richly. God doesn't just give me people like me, which means that I, I grow more fully. The spiritual world that we see in a book or that we are told about is a far cry from the reality. And that's why I think it's good to have that engagement and to be able to openly discuss spirituality in safe places like this and out of that discussion then you start to see more cooperation, better understanding, prejudices are melted away. It applies to literally anyone and especially people of my age and um, young people. I think sometimes it's so easy for religions or for people of no religion or, or anyone to, to feel completely just um, alienated from the other and, and to not understand, to not see the positives that, that run through and that actually really everyone has the same the same interests, the same um, kind of ideas at heart. Should people of faith get involved in politics? I don't think there's ever going to be any political party that's completely in accord with religious teachings, but we are citizens and as citizens we exercise the power and the liberty we have as citizens to make a difference and we need that kind of groundswell of community pressure and vision and activism to keep things moving. Russell Brand may think it's a silly idea to vote, but I'm afraid I disagree rather strongly with him. What is your opinion on um, the way the government is currently uh, acting towards um, immigrants? The assumption, these are people who are after what we've got. Sharing makes us weaker. We've always had that sense of new communities arriving, modifying the kind of society we are. We move on together. While there are perfectly reasonable questions to ask about what is a manageable level of migration, and while there are real problems about you know, the attractions of a low-wage economy to immigrants, none of that ought to make us buy into this language of, as I say, deep anxiety and insecurity. Things do not have to be as they are. Divisions don't have to be as they are. Misunderstood motives, misunderstood language doesn't have to be how it is. Living in a city, it is hard to find that balance between spirituality and kind of getting on with things. So it was nice to, to hear about how that's possible. It gives me time to work on my opinions, to seek the opinions of others, and to continue to build on my own understanding. Evenings like this cultivate hope and they generate wisdom uh, across the traditions. For me, it was a kind of a clarion call back to center ourselves within this relationship with with, with our communities, with the world around us. Our first task is simply witness. Bearing witness to that spirit of clarity and connectedness. The second thing is to be active, as active as we can be, on behalf of those who are not seen and who feel disconnected. All those who feel the connections have been cut. We meet such people in so many contexts, people who are convinced that they are not seen and not heard. Who is your MP of the Year?